Alex threw open the front doors and paused, luxuriating in the blanket of warmth that suddenly enveloped her. She advanced further into the cabin, breathing in the pleasant aroma of last night's fire and the fresh, spicy scent of pine that permeated the whole room. This was as close to heaven as she had ever been. She moved forward, her legs still stiff from the cold and the climb, and slumped into the plumpest of the overstuffed chairs. She let her head fall back and closed her eyes, enjoying the sensation of heat that prickled and tingled her skin, even as the cold clung to her face and hands. She was so cold she would swear she was burning, or so hot she felt like she might freeze, or something like that. She didn't care which. She just happily let herself sink into the chair like a melting snowman. Eric trudged slowly up the front porch stairs and came inside. Alex turned to watch as he closed the door and leaned heavily against it, letting his own head fall back against the solid oak. He let himself rest for just a moment before he bent to remove his boots, with a slow stiffness that betrayed just how hard the climb had been on him. He had walked much further than she had last night, after which he'd had to carry her back up to the hunting cabin, too. And she knew he hadn't slept. While she had slept, cocooned in his coat and blanket, he had probably sat awake most of the night, as he always did, only to get up and make another two-hour trek back up the mountain. Guilt stabbed into her, and gratitude, and a surge of love that she hoped she'd never let him see. He shook little nuggets of ice and snow from his sock feet, and slid his cold-weather pants down over his jeans, leaving them in a pile by the door as he padded forward and started to remove his coat and the layers underneath. He moved so stiffly, with so much obvious discomfort, and he winced as he shrugged free of everything but his thick black pullover and let it fall unceremoniously to the floor. He glanced up at her as she watched him and frowned. Take your coat off, you'll warm up faster, he said. I can't move just yet, she murmured, letting her head fall against the back of the chair again. The chair felt soft and deliciously warm, like it was heated from within. In fact, I may never move again. I'm going to take a hot shower, he said, sounding like he wanted to maintain his brusque, angry demeanor but was just too damn tired. Unless you want to go first. You go, she murmured lazily. I'll put on some coffee and make breakfast. He took the stairs quietly, and after a few moments, she heard the shower come on. The sound of water drumming overhead was somehow comforting, even cozy, and the thought of her own coming bath made her smile. After a moment more, she reluctantly pried herself from the chair, her body all but locked in rigor mortis, and peeled off her still cold clothing. She threw more logs on the fire, which had died down to mere embers, and lit some kindling, watching in satisfaction as the fire caught and the flames began to leap. She knelt by the hearth, warming her hands in front of the blaze, until she actually began to feel too warm. Then she rose stiffly and went to the kitchen to see to their next most urgent need. Food. Grateful for the fully stocked fridge, she began breakfast, determined not to give in to the thoughts that now pestered her. The merciless, insistent thoughts that had been held at bay by the need to get warm. Now that she was thawing out, those thoughts positively screamed at her for attention. He could have kissed her, she thought. She had offered herself to him so obviously, she had tilted her face up to his and invited him, with parted lips and a wildly thumping heart, to just kiss her if he wanted to, and he hadn't. He had stepped away, even out in the middle of nowhere, even far removed from Eric Johansson or Daniel Briggs or whoever he thought he was. He had backed away with no one watching, with no one to answer to, with no reason on earth not to, he had chosen to step back instead of stepping forward. And there was only one reason a man would do that. She felt her heart tighten at the thought, but tried to will it away. All right, so he didn't want her. Maybe, possibly, at some point in the past, 
The thought might have entered his mind, and she had picked up on it, but clearly he wasn't interested now. As painful as his rejection was, as humiliating as it was to offer herself to him and be so thoroughly refused, she had to try to salvage something out of this situation. She still had so much she wanted to discuss with him, so many treatment ideas she wanted him to consider. And more than that, she wanted to remain friends. Colleagues, at the very least, if he wouldn't allow anything more. Maybe she could convince him to let this uncomfortable mistake slide. Maybe he was gentleman enough to let it pass without further embarrassment. Maybe they could return to PGI and just continue on as if none of this ever happened. He might even agree to stay here for a few more days and rest. But even as the thoughts raced through her mind, she knew none of it was likely. The best she could do, realistically, was let him go now if he still wanted to, and hope to be able to talk to him later. Hope that there would even be a later. She fried some eggs and slid them onto plates with toast and sliced tomatoes and was just pouring coffee when Eric sauntered in, his hair still wet, wearing a fresh black pullover and jeans. The aroma of soap and some sort of masculine shampoo followed after him, infusing the kitchen with a masculine air that contrasted sharply with the homey smells of coffee and toast. She focused her attention on setting the food down on the table, and smiled faintly as he eyed the food appreciatively, and sank into a chair to dig in. She took the seat opposite him and began to eat. Thank you for this, he said, between mouthfuls. Politeness, manners, no real gratitude or emotion of any kind. He dabbed at his mouth with a napkin and kept his eyes down, devoting his attention instead to his food. She said nothing, just sipped her coffee and finished off a slice of toast. She had been ravenous when she'd entered the kitchen, but now she found herself eating almost as an afterthought nourishing her body without taking any pleasure in it. She didn't even really feel hungry anymore. She watched him eat, mesmerized at how quickly he could put away what she considered to be a fairly substantial meal. In less than three or four forkfuls, the food was gone and he was gulping down his coffee, as though he had been given five minutes to eat what he could before heading back out into the fray. The angle of his body in the chair told her that he wouldn't linger there. There wouldn't be any casual conversation over coffee, or a request for seconds. While she didn't want him to leave, she couldn't think of anything she might say that would keep him here, and so she ate without speaking. The cabin was eerily quiet, with only the muted sounds of the fire crackling in the living room to break the silence. The piercing cry of a hawk somewhere in the distance only added to the sense of loneliness that the silence implied. She glanced out the window trying to spot that lone predator drifting on air currents far above the tree line, but seeing nothing she turned back to Eric. He was looking at her as he drank, but quickly lowered his eyes. He drained his coffee and was up, striding from the room without a word. She finished her food and downed the last of her coffee, watching his powerful form as he walked away. A sudden flash of memory caught her off guard a memory of the first time she had seen his bare back. He had peeled off his shirt to let her examine him, and had moved away from her across the room to put it with his jacket. Just the simple act of walking had made his muscles bunch and move so fluidly, with such enviable male grace, that she had simply stared at him in wonder. His skin was smooth and even and lightly tanned, interrupted in places by pale white lines and scars, that did nothing to take away from his beauty. But it was the heat that emanated from him, a sense of power and control revealed by every sharply defined muscle that had shocked her into an almost stunned silence. She was a doctor. She had seen hundreds, probably thousands, of naked men during her training, but she had never seen such a man as Eric. Beautiful didn't begin to describe him, Masculine was too weak a word. He was perfectly formed, exquisitely made. She could hardly believe he was actually the same species as she. She had barely been able to examine him that day, had scarcely trusted herself to do her job. 
when he had turned to sit on her examining table and she had taken in the sight of his broad, muscled chest, lightly dusted with fine golden hair. She'd had to close her eyes before she'd allowed herself to touch him. She'd paused to put on some gloves, in fact, and he'd given her a questioning look, so she'd made up something about following procedures. The truth was, if she'd allowed herself to feel the heat of his skin, if she'd let her hands follow the slow rise and fall of his chest as he breathed, she doubted she would have been able to keep her own blood pressure from spiking, or her own hands from wandering. If he hadn't looked at her with those eyes, if he had just sat there submitting to her touch, looking at her with wide blue eyes that tracked her slightest move, she might have been able to ignore the sculpted perfection of his body. But with those bashful little smiles she sometimes managed to tease out of him, those hesitant laughs, those impossibly gorgeous eyes, and the expression of uncertainty and, yes, sometimes desire that she saw blooming there, it was all she could do to finish her exam and leave him to dress. She set her coffee cup down grimly and tried to push the image of his naked perfection out of her mind. He probably wouldn't like knowing that she was having such thoughts about him, and that realization alone cooled her ardor considerably, reminding her that any magic she'd felt between them had been entirely one-sided. She had to fix this, she thought. She had to say something. If he really was going to leave soon, she had to let him know how sorry she was for having blundered so inappropriately into his private life. She left the dishes on the table and went out to the living room. He was lounging on the couch, staring into the fire. He looked worn, beyond tired, his gaze fixed on nothing but the flames flickering in the hearth. Eric, I want to say a few things she began cautiously, standing awkwardly by the mantel as if to hide behind it. He didn't say anything, nor did he take his gaze from the fire. I want to apologize, she pushed on. I'm so sorry about all this. I'm sorry I offended you. I didn't mean to. He blinked slowly. No need. She came forward cautiously and sat on the couch, not close enough to alarm him. It's just that I misunderstood your... She trailed off and then started again. I believed... You felt something for me that you, that you don't. That was my mistake. I'm sorry. His lips parted slightly, but he said nothing, brooding into the hypnotic flames. The point is, I'd like it if you just stayed here for a few days and, and rested. I promise I won't... She searched for the word. Bother you. You have my word. Her throat actually tightened on the last word, humiliation flushing through her again. It was bad enough that he didn't want her, but to have to mortify herself like this, to have to promise not to inflict her desire on him, she didn't know how much more her pride could take. She looked at him with a cold, little hope swirling in her stomach the kind that clings to life inside the lovesick, despite all of the evidence that their love isn't returned. So I hope you'll stay, she went on, determined to say what she had meant to say. But if you want to leave, I won't try to follow you again. I'll just wait here until Nick arrives. His eyes drifted up to hers, and for the briefest moment she thought she saw relief in them. Relief that trampled her heart just that little bit more. You mean that? I do, she swallowed, averting her gaze. She just couldn't look at those eyes. But then again, she couldn't look away either. She chanced to glance at him and he was looking at her, his eyes communicating something inscrutable. It wasn't fair of me to do this to you. I thought, well, you know what I thought. And if you hadn't spent the night out on that mountain, saving my life again, I wouldn't ask you to stay. But you need to rest and recover. That's more important to me than anything. She felt tears begin to prick at her eyes, and she willed them away, cursing her bruised heart. She would not cry. Not in front of him, not now, not ever. 
However much her eyes watered, she would hold back the tears somehow. He watched her silently, and she saw his own eyes change. He knew she was trying not to cry. She could see it in the twitching of his cheek and the starkness of his own eyes. His breathing hitched, too, the way it had when he had been about to kiss her. And rather than watch the rapid rise and fall of his chest, she pressed on. I just have one request, she said. Please, don't take this out on Nick. Don't leave Phoenix Group over this. He was only trying to help. Eric made a noise and looked away. He was so much more embarrassed by all of this than she'd ever realized he could be. This trained soldier, this testosterone-driven man, whose hormones raged through him constantly, was embarrassed at Nick's involvement in such a personal matter. She'd had no idea he felt this way, would never have imagined someone as tough as he was, who had endured the unimaginable, as he had, could be brought down by so little. It was remarkably human, remarkably normal. Her heart twisted at the thought. When she reached out to lay her hand gently on his arm, he didn't flinch or pull away. He's your brother in every way that counts. Remember that, she said gently. He loves you. She faltered, her voice catching. Unspoken words filled the air. The silent, potent words she knew they could both hear. I love his eyes drifted to hers again, and she almost melted. She could practically see the ice thawing, could almost see the veil lifting from those beautiful eyes. On impulse, thrown in by the uncertainty she saw in him once again, she leaned forward and slowly, cautiously, pressed a chaste, delicate kiss to his cheek. It was the barest whisper of a kiss, but she felt him relax a little beneath it. She should have sat back should have given him the space that she had promised him not thirty seconds ago, but she couldn't. She kissed his cheek again, and then moved slowly to kiss the ridge of his cheekbone. He didn't move, or flinch, or push her away. He just watched her with those same eyes she'd seen that day in her office, those same questioning, uncertain, heart-melting eyes. She lifted her head slowly and caressed his stubbled jaw let her fingers trail along the strong, sharp contours of his face, gently, soothingly, as she engaged him with her eyes. Then she slowly tilted her head, bent towards him and brushed her lips gently against his. Ignoring the surge of emotion that threatened to consume her, ignoring the part of her that wanted him so desperately she was almost shaking, she kept her touch timid, she kissed him lightly, pulling back before leaning forward again to meet his lips once more. They were warm and soft, and for the briefest second, for one heady, dizzying second, he began to kiss her back. She could feel his resolve start to melt, could feel him reaching to meet her kiss. His hand drifted to her hip and rested there, as the light, sweet, almost kiss lingered, their lips barely touching. Their noses bumped, their cheeks and chins brushed against each other lightly as they touched and withdrew, their breath mingled, their wide eyes roaming over each other's faces, as if they had never seen each other before, as if they both wanted to commit the other's face to memory as if just almost touching like this, just bumping noses and cheeks and breathing into each other's warmth was intoxicating enough. Sensations rioted through her, thrilled her, made her almost breathless with disbelief. He was letting her kiss him. He was slowly, so slowly moving towards her, gradually letting himself kiss and be kissed, letting her hair fall against his face, she angled her head and pressed her lips gently against his. As his lips parted slightly beneath hers, in an invitation to deepen the kiss, she felt his warmth, his soft, lush warmth, and the anticipation of the coming kiss 
made a small moan escape her lips. Eric, she whispered, the words escaping along with the pleasure. I love you. And that was all it took. He tore away from her, pushing her off so forcefully that she fell backwards and tumbled painfully to the floor. She rose up on her elbows and stared at him, stunned, blinking back tears as he glared down at her. The shock of it spiked through her, the sudden loss of their sweet intimacy stinging like ice. She wanted to plead with him, to crawl back up into his arms and caress him again, to recapture that heady moment right before he deepened their kiss into something more. It had felt so right, so perfectly right, to kiss and caress and love him. He had felt it, too, in that moment before he had started to give in. She had felt him sinking into the warmth, the sweetness, a divine mixture of tenderness and desire. He had wanted it, too, just as much as she had. The loss of it now left her cold, blinking up at him in confusion and disbelief. At the very least, she expected him to reach down for her, to help her from the floor, but he didn't. He just stared at her his eyes sharp and narrow, and showing none of the vulnerability that had tempted her to kiss him. I need to rest before I set out again, he said, a muscle in his cheek flexing. And he strode away, leaving her bewildered and staring, braced on her elbows on the floor.